Hi, my name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants. And today we're here at the Laguna Hills Nursery in Santa Ana, California, where we're going to meet the owner, second generation owner of this nursery, Gary Matsuoka, who's going to talk about three very important and very different gardening lessons that will help you make this growing season your best. Let's get started. So here we are now with the owner of the Laguna Hills Nursery, Gary Matsuoka. Did I pronounce that all right? Good enough. That's good. And um, if you want to share with all of us, what are the three topics we're going to discuss in today's lessons? Well, today we'll be talking about what makes our potting soil different than anyone else's, and then talk about uh, whitewashing certain trees for uh, sunburn protection, and end up with a uh, little uh, discussion about apple trees. Wonderful. So here we are now in the apple section, your apple orchard section of the nursery. And um, being that Southern California doesn't really experience much of a winter, especially this winter, um, how are we successfully going to grow apples? Well, we've been growing apples now since the 1980s. And almost every apple we've tried has made fruit here very well. And our major supplier in there has also determined that just about every apple that they've tried growing in Irvine has produced a good crop. So we're carrying more apples than ever and we find that just about any apple you want to grow does quite well. So now we're carrying a lot more apples without winters, with winters. Uh, they might act a little more normal, but without winters they still fruit and make a good quality fruit here too. Let me give a quick tour um, for the viewers of just all the different apples that we have here so that we can um, share um, one here being, I see here is the, the, the ghost apple variety. Um, another here being the gala apples. Here, let's take a look at this so you can see the picture as well. Uh, I see you over here, which I've got on my property, is the, uh, the red Fuji. If we come in a little closer, you can see over here um, is the Ein Shimmer. Over here, the Dorset Golden. Let's take a look at the pictures because the pictures are also helpful. So here's um, the Dorset Golden down below, the Brayburn. Let's come around a little bit more. We have a few pears on that end, but the rest of these are apples. Yum. Asian pears. Those don't do well. A pineapple pear. Another pineapple pear. The Hood pear. Right in here, one of my favorites, the Fuji Apple. Down below, a Pink Lady, Semi Dwarf. Another Pink Lady. This is our best apple. So Gary's favorite apple, the Sun Downer Apple. The John of Gold Apple. Here's the Honeycrisp Apple. And another one of my favorites, the Granny Smith. So the Sundowner is your favorite apple, why? Well that's one of the Australia varieties and it happens, uh, you know, Australia, the place where it comes from is Perth, Australia, which is pretty much the same latitude in the world as Los Angeles. So it was actually meant for our climate. It ripens at the right time, which is after the heat wave is over. So apples do best if they ripen before or after the heat of the year. So you won't see too many apples growing in the deep south because it's just too hot too long. Here our climate's really mellow until middle of summer and mellow after mid-fall. So the apples ripen early and late tend to do well. The sundowner apple happens to ripen here in November, December. So it's perfect timing. Uh, Granny Smith does the same. Pink Lady does the same. Those are all Australian apples and, and they seem to be our best apples we can grow. That's great. And then the other apples that grow well here are the ones that ripen before it gets hot. So we have Anna and Einschmier from Israel ripen before the heat. Uh, same with um, Dorset Golden. Like how early do those ripen? July. Wow. June, July. Um, a few apples can handle the heat. So Gala, um, which ripens in August, doesn't mind the heat at all. We don't doesn't have any faults with the heat. Of course, in Orange County, we have a lot of areas that don't get hot in the summer right along the coast, and that's where the Fuji, Jajana Gold just ex excel right along the coast. Brayburn, Fuji, Jajana Gold, 
uh, our customers along the coast say those are their best apples. So depending on the varieties you pick, you can have apples as early as June. Right. Can you have any apples sooner than June? June is where it starts, June right? June is pretty much where it starts. So June through October. No, through uh, January into February. Oh wow, you can go that late so, into the season. Yeah, in our in our backyard, Granny Smith is you know sweet by November, and by Christmas it's yellow and it's fragrant, and by February it's super fragrant and very sweet. It it totally changes from a green apple that's tart and sweet to a very delicious yellow apple. Oh, that's interesting. And it'll hang till February, so about three quarters of the year you can be harvesting apples. That's great. Um, one of the things I wanted to share also is I see a lot of your apple trees are going into bloom. If you can come in a little closer, you can see that this particular apple being the ghost apple has got some beautiful white pink flowers over here. And then if you go behind it right here, I'm gonna put my finger on it. Right there, if you come back a little bit further, you can see that this here is considered a spur, right? Yes. Gary, would you call this a spur? So, so you can see it's basically about um, an inch, maybe an inch and a half long coming off of the trunk of the tree and that's um, blooming. And I'm hoping you can discuss a little bit about spurs and the importance of spurs and, and about pruning and making sure that we don't, we don't compromise um, fruit and yields. And, and I know one of the things that most um, gardeners I visit are most concerned about pruning their apples. They think if they cut it, they're gonna lose their flowers, they're gonna lose their fruit. So um, what, what can you share with us in regards to you know making sure we have maximum quality apples? So apples and most fruit trees in general, uh, the leaves that are at the ends of the branches get the most sunlight. And during the fall, those leaves will produce flower buds right at the base of them. So on uh, most fruit trees, apples included, the ends of the branches are where they get the most sun. You get flower buds forming at the ends of each branch in the fall. So if, on a young tree especially, where they only have these uh, regular branching occurring, then all the flower buds are at the tips of your branches. You don't want to prune at that time. Of course, you could have pruned it in September before they made the flower buds, and then just the branches don't grow any further in, in the fall, and then you'll have your flower buds right where you pruned them in September. As the apple tree gets older, it does make a lot of short branches on the interior, the, the fruiting spurs, and they'll come off the trunk and the lo lower parts of each branch. And those being short branches will have flowers and fruit there too. And in fact, in mature trees, that's usually the best quality apples come off the spurs on the interior because they're less subject to sun burning. Oh, that's a great point. So the goal when pruning your tree is to create as many spurs within the tree um, and basically so the outer part of the branches and the leaves and everything else basically shelter and protect the inner lying apples. And one of the things the growers do is as they train the trees, they want the branches to be almost horizontal. The closer you are the horizontal, the more spurs they start producing. So you can see you've got, you basically are pulling it down to about, I'd say a 45 degree angle. Or lower, no, a little bit lower than 45. But 90 would be too far, you wouldn't want to go straight out. You tend to get uh, yeah you tend to get water spouts growing it if you take it totally horizontal so they want it slightly above horizontal interesting and then um, when it comes to varieties of apples I notice uh, most of the apples that are here are semi dwarfs but um, can we get our hands on dwarfs and standard trees um, with this nursery we can uh, the growers grow them all that we that supply us now the thing about standards is standard trees tend to take up to five years to start flowering and fruiting so it takes longer semi dwarfs you can see here can fruit the first year usually by the second uh, at the latest the growers in commercial areas usually use true dwarfs that don't get as tall the problem with two dwarf apples is they need really really wet soil and they basically have to be supported their entire lives they don't develop a trunk strong enough to hold themselves up. So most orchards, apple orchards in the northern states are on trellises for that reason. Interesting. So we tend to want trees that can handle drought better. Uh, standard can help handle drought the best, semi-dwarf next. So we go semi-dwarf only because we want that compromise of earlier production. Uh, but standards do are best suited for our climate, our drier climate. But the standard would also take up way more space than just having a semi-dwarf where you or can have to prune it a lot more. <laughs> That's great. About here? Well the main thing with the apples too is that um, 
most apples bloom in the spring. Now, in Oregon, it's interesting, they said most apples have a two week blooming window and it's nice to cross pollinate apples if they want more than one variety and they have to choose them real carefully. In Southern California, the apples tend to bloom for two months. They can't figure out the season, so they just keep blooming. So it's not as important to choose the, the right varieties for cross pollination here. You get any two varieties you'll get. Uh, now, apples are self fertile. Uh, cross pollination makes them a little more symmetrical shaped because they have a full complement of seeds rather than just one or two per fruit. The other thing is you, they need a lot of water. So apples do well on the lawn, but if they're not wet, they look terrible. So keep your apples well watered. That's interesting. That's a great tip that you just gave. That um, are all apples self fertile? As far as we know. So um, with apples being self fertile, so you can just plant one apple and enjoy apples off of it. But planting two close to each other, but not the same variety of apple, right. but in a related different variety. Like for example, a um, Granny Smith with a Gala apple would be two different varieties of apple. When those, when that pollen from the Gala goes to the Granny Smith um, um, flower, that's going to improve the fertilization within the fruit that will result in better quality for your thing. Right, you get a, a better complement of seeds instead of just, a lot of times with just one apple tree, you only get one or two seeds and the fruit's lopsided. Yeah. If you get all the seeds, then it's a little bit larger fruit, more symmetrically shaped. Well, I know this principle applies not just to apples, but I know avocados are one where, again, having an A and a B, um, in my research and reading said you can increase production by as little as 5% to as much as 20% more avocados by simply the principle of cross pollinating being having two similar but not identical but related of the same within your garden and that'll improve pollination within the trees but are there other fruit trees that you know that that principle would apply where you'll have better quality fruit by cross pollination well most fruit uh, orchards are cross pollinated with a few exceptions i mean peaches and nectarines generally not but most orchards want to have that cross pollination that's great sure. that's great well, I think this was a very informative, very educational lesson on apples, and thank you so very much for your time, Gary. Thank you. <laughs> We're also proud to share that the Laguna Hills Nursery is also carrying the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 products as well as the Whitewash products that you can find here as well. Um, and we're very grateful that Laguna Hills Nursery is carrying um, these products. Um, be sure you can also call in in advance to make sure that you've got the colors that you're looking for before you make the trip. I'm going to give you all of that contact information right now. So let me share with you how conveniently located the Laguna Hills Nursery is. If you come in a little closer, you can see that they're just off of the 55 freeway. They're just off the 22 freeway. They're just off the 5 freeway. And they're in the city of Santa Ana, but they're bordering. So here's Santa Ana, but they're bordering the city of Tustin. They're bordering the city of Orange. Um, Anaheim is right there. There's Disneyland. So if you come down to Disneyland, don't forget to stop by Laguna Hills Nursery. There's Knott's Berry Farm, um, very close to Seal Beach and Long Beach as well. Um, and then here's all of their contact information. Laguna Hills Nursery, you can also go to lagunahillsnursery.com, located at 1829 North Tustin Avenue in Santa Ana, California. And feel free to give them a call to make sure you've got your plants in stock at 714-542-5600. So when you go to the lagunahillsnursery.com, you'll see that they do free gardening classes every Saturday morning starting at 9.15 a.m. Do not forget to sign up for the weekly newsletters where you'll get a lot of helpful tips and gardening tips directly from Gary. Um, and do you want to share some other lessons that you talk about in your gardening classes? Well, coming up, uh, we've got one on sustainable gardening and then we have one on pruning. We do special classes on roses, how to take care of them, how to choose them. Uh, we go through most of the fruit trees and the vegetables also. So we cover, try to cover everything uh, throughout the year. Every class, every week is different. That's fantastic. There's so many informative educational lessons and I learn something new every time I'm here with you. At the end of this video, I'm basically gonna put all the links to all of the Laguna Hill Nursery YouTube channel videos that um, they've been publishing with their garden lessons that they've been doing um, for the last, um, I think, think about three to six months of, of content is up there right now. Um, and, and, and stay tuned, by subscribing, you'll be connected to all of that. So again, do not forget to subscribe. 
like their videos, come and visit this nursery. It's one of my favorite places here in Orange County. Um, and thanks again, Gary, for all of your help. Oh, thank you. If you've so I hope you've enjoyed this educational moment um, from Gary at the Laguna Hills Nursery and Ivory Organics. And if so, be sure to like it. And most importantly, by subscribing below, you'll be connected to this and all of our other helpful and educational videos. Thanks again for watching and happy gardening.